What's up? Alex Howell here with TheDailyScrew.com. Uh, today is September 17th, 2016. Saturday evening in my part of the globe. And today kind of marks uh, a day in the new phase of the bad things coming. World War III, uh, domestic terror. Today, the United States bombed a Syrian army outpost, killed 62 Syrian soldiers, government soldiers, and immediately after, ISIS came and uh, overran the position. Russia uh, demanded an immediate UN Security Council closed door Security Council meeting where there the Russian diplomat uh, Vitli Cherkin, if I pronounced it right, um, ended up walking out of these talks with his American counterpart Samantha Power because she snubbed him and said that they're grandstanding and they're you know they're, they're, they're you know, making stuff up and they're just making a big deal out of nothing. Was it about Ambassador Powers' comments that lead you to believe that there's no negotiations to be had? Well, uh, because, uh, well, first, uh, I was appalled that while I was talking, she was talking to the media. You know, this is a very serious thing. And then as she walked in, she talk, she, without hearing what I had to say, she said that what I said was a stunt, and then she didn't really care to hear what I had to say. After that, I walked out. The um, Central Command's official statement was that it was an accident, even though they were saying that they were trying to help the Assad regime uh, fight ISIS when actually they just bombed the Assad regime so ISIS could come in. I mean, that's what happened. And uh, Samantha Power is uh, said in the past that the real fight is against Assad, the real fight in Syria. I don't think that's a fair characterization. What is the administration's position about Assad? He is still the highest he priority. He has lost his legitimacy and he must go. I'm not going to talk about priorities this or that. So it seems that her motivations here, that's a good thing for her, according to her. She said uh, at, to Chuck Todd at one point. But this, I'm going to guess this is kind of this is going to go downhill pretty bad. Frankly, I don't know what the next step is going to be or what uh, the next move we can expect. Unfortunately, from what uh, I heard Ambassador Power say as she walked into the room, this is not a very good omen. They are, they are, they are, losing, they are losing control. They can't have Trump be president. They got to start World War III. One of many things, collapse the, collapse the economy and uh, all sorts of unrest, suspend the elections, continuity of government, what have you. But the Russian diplomat ambassador to the UN walked out on talks. The talks failed between the United States and Russia. And this is all during a ceasefire too, a supposed ceasefire in the country, which in the past uh, week or so, since the ceasefire has been implemented on the 9th, I want to say, uh, Russia has just out, outright said, America, you're not keeping up your end of the deal of the ceasefire. You're not doing anything. It's like there was no ceasefire. The United States uh, has violated two of its commitments. One is the commitment to cessation of hostilities, which the United States undertook together with us in February and which we reconfirmed just a few days ago. And the other is the commitment uh, the United States gave to the government of Syria when the United States started its air campaign uh, two years ago. Uh, the, the United States promised to the Syrian government that air, their airstrikes are not going to affect the position of the Syrian uh, armed forces. And ceasefires, I mean, just don't work. They're not working in Ukraine. They're not working in Syria. Um, does, I, I, America... The bad guys who have taken over our government, if you go to the dailystrew.com, I wrote an article about this uh, 
guy, I can't remember his first name, but Rogoff character, who was an uh, International Monetary Fund chief economist and economy and economics professor at Harvard, says we need to ban all cash so criminals don't have it. It's because criminals have cash, nobody can have cash, it's bad to hoard it, and it keeps them under the mattress, all that, you can't be doing that as bad, ban all cash, it has to be... Uh, the same digital currency from the same central banks to everybody. So that means a one world digital currency. I got the quotes on the article. Go check it out. Um, those type of people have, are, have taken over our government. And um, this isn't good because those people are provoking Russia into a third world war. While Russia should be getting awards from the UN for having the best turnaround a country has ever had. In history within 20 years going from a communist shit block to one that's embraced a free market and liberal ideas and freedom and laissez-faire I mean sure they're not perfect and sure they don't have a Second Amendment but at least they embrace free speech they have real journalists there real journalism they're killing jihadis a lot more than we are and uh, this is what they get in return so this might spiral downward. This might be the uh, the first. Um, how would you say that little line of gunpowder that goes to the to the keg of powder? It just got sparked, and uh, it seems like these the talks have deteriorated. The United States doesn't seem to be wanting to oblige Russia, give an apology. They're just accusing them of stuff. And um, you see, I'm going to have in the video that this uh, Russian ambassador to the UN called out the Washington Post during his press conference about what happened at the uh, Security Council meeting. Calling the, just calling them out on all sorts of misinformation about what Russia has been just making stuff up about Russia that they're that they, that they tried to purposely push the refugees out of the Middle East into Europe when he goes on to say that Russia has been, uh, you know, we, they weren't, they, they recommended against the war in Iraq that destabilized the Middle East. They recommended against taking out Gaddafi, which uh, turned Libya into a failed state and had a whole country full of refugees happen. They uh, recommended not messing with Syria. And in fact, uh, is there anybody from the Washington Post here? I was. Uh, this is the line which uh, they have been uh, they have been taking from uh, from time to time. I was struck by the line which ended the editorial of the Washington Post yesterday. It accuses Russia of, Russia of a number of things, but then it says Russia launched millions of refugees from Syria to Europe in order to un under uh, uh, destabilize Europe. You know, we have warned them not to invade Iraq in 2003 which caused the ex extreme stabilization of the Middle East. We warned them not to stabilize Libya and not to engage a regime ch change operation there. We warned them a quick regime change in Syria was not going to work. They chose to you know, pump trillions of billions of dollars of weapons to some strange people, so-called uh, moderate opposition groups who, who can, they cannot control any longer. You know, uh, and, and now we, it's our fault that uh, refugees are going from Turkey uh, to But they did anyway, and the West is the cause of the refugee crisis. And not to mention George Soros has been quarterbacking the whole refugee crisis from the emails that got leaked from the Open Society Foundation. Um, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, share this one. Really important. I'm going to have uh, some links below. I'm going to write a short article about it. Read it. DailyScrew.com. Check it out. Uh, relevant news real stuff that's going on in the world and here's one thing that bothers me what bothers me the most about this is you know i'm somewhat prepared you know with, with storable food um guns ammunition stuff like that and sort of in, in case of some sort of calamity happens which i don't want i'm trying to prevent it from happening but what really bothers me the most is nobody cares about this kind of stuff you could go up to your average person tell them about what happened today united states bombing syria posi syrian positions killing syrian government soldiers and they'd be like oh, what the fuck? i'm trying to talk about football it's football season why do you want to bring that up 
And that is the, that you know, and that's, that's why we're the position we're in. Um, I, it's really hard to look at them sometimes. Yeah, I feel bad for them that they've just been so uh, conditioned to think that real stuff is just too heady and way above them when it's, that's the whole, the social engineers try to make it like they're the elite. Don't worry, it's up to us. Leave it, leave, leave everything up to us. Just care about your, your little job and your little family and we'll, we'll take care of the whole, and we'll take care of everything over here. And then the people believe, buy it. And they think it's funny when you talk about this kind of stuff and it's not funny. And uh, I'm trying to prevent it from happening and I'm gonna keep prevent, trying to prevent it, prevent it from happening. But they, they, they think it's funny and, and shit's about to get real for everybody real quick here. And they're gonna be wondering what happened and they're not gonna know who to point fingers at. And it's gonna be chaotic and it's not gonna be good. And I hope that doesn't happen. Stay tuned, dailyscrew.com. I'm Alex Hoddle. How serious was it that a clash could have happened in the skies between Russian and American fighters? I have, I have no details. 